If the rules don't work to ensure justice, you will have to create your own sense of justice. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything to be right or wrong. In a world where you can't trust anyone anymore, the only thing you can trust is your own sense of justice. The open road will be controlled by gangs of glory roaders. Here, the concept of the vigilant has emerged precisely because of this concern. When the rules of the modern world lose its validity, people will develop different methods to secure themselves. So, what if I asked you what name comes to your mind first while I'm talking about vigilant? If you are a fierce boomer like me, your answer will probably be Max Rakatansky. When director George Miller was about to shoot his first feature movie, he had been looking for a face that would fit the screen. The face he was looking for was a young actor who would be acting in his first feature movie, Mel Gibson, who will be among Hollywood's best rebels in the following years. Gibson's character development as Max Rikadensky was so impressive that it has become an indispensable face for the fans of the Mad Max series. Mad Max quickly got out of the many of the post-apocalyptic movie productions which we saw at that time. It became some kind of bold brand in very very short time. It also made Mel Gibson a bright star. With three sequels, it became one of the most popular post-apocalyptic movies in the history of cinema. After a while, both George Miller and Mel Gibson were associated with this precious series. You know, history of cinema has always witnessed such actor and director collaborations. For example, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp, Quentin Tarantino and Samuel Jackson, Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio and of course Chetty Ninanj and Junae Darkin. We have given many examples of our jet director Chetin Inan's expertise about Turkish locations. Turkish Star Wars, Turkish Rambo, Turkish Jaws, etc. etc. Of course, he worked with a legendary name like Joanna Tarkin in many of these movies. After all, in the case of Turkish Mad Max, it was not expected that such a production would not come out of the hands of this double team. I think many of you may think of something different when we talk about Turkish Mad Max. Okay, no offense, no offense. Let's face it, even if many moviegoers or diehard cinephiles in Turkey doesn't even know about the example of such a Turk exploitation. Chetin Inan shot this movie called Last Step of Death, Ölüme Son Adam in original, in 1983, so that means two years after the Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior movie released in Turkey. Interestingly, the first Mad Max movie was not released in Turkey in those years. A daredevilish cinema distributor released the Mad Max The Road Warrior, second movie of the series in Turkey somehow, well, this one was an unexpected success. Well, thanks to this, the first Mad Max movie was released a few months later after the second one. Here we can find the answer that Chetin Inaj did not rush to design a new Turk exploitation about this movie. The Last Step to Death is not exactly an adaptation of Mad Max entirely. Of course, Junae Tarkin's image is very very similar to Max Rakatansky, but if you are looking for something about the Mad Max cinematic universe which Miller brought to the big screen, well, you might be a little disappointed. I suggest you take a look at our Turkish Jaws movie to better understand what I mean. After all, again, Post-apocalyptic world is not depicted in Turkish Mad Max movie. Korkma. Ölürsen sevgililerine kahramanca öldüğünü söylerim. 
So, uh, what we got here? Two bright color palette for this kind of Vigilant movie, lots of close-ups, explosion scenes with synchronic disharmony, fantastic figuration and the kind of action symphony you can only see in Chetini Nanch movies. Well, what exactly do we think is the reason the movie is named Turkish Mad Max even though it's so far far away from the Miller's post-apocalyptic universe? İdare eder miyiz? İdare ederiz. Yara sana yakışmış. <gülüyor> Sende de fena durmuyor. Actually, aside from the image of our vigilant hero Khan imitating Max, Khan's struggle is also similar to Max. Traps, intrigues, and a man trying to achieve his own justice. Let me make the definitions a little more acceptable. So, take the Miller's post-apocalyptic universe and carry it to the Istanbul of the 80s. Uh, uh-uh, nope, it still don't exactly look like Mad Max. Wait, I have a crazy doubt. If Turkish Mad Max released earlier, we could say that this movie is some kind of adaptation of Jagged Alliance. Should I tell you that Jagged Alliance is based on this movie? Mm, I better think about that. Well, look at this. This famous track scene is the one of the scenes where the movie is probably look like more and more Mad Max. Uh, also, the gunslinger duel scene in the final is undoubtedly the proof of the how close the movie carried the western aesthetic successfully. Ultimately, last step to that under an adaptation identity, but it's a movie of the cinematic identity identified with Chetin Inan's own style. Oh, well. As we approach to the end of the another Turks exploitation adventure, I want to close the shop with an aphorism of Khan that seems a little bit important. Until today, we have always turned our backs to the enemy. Let's turn out front a little. Huh? <clears throat> okay, it's totally meaningless. Well, anyway, take care my friends and don't forget, stand firm, qualified and solid. Well if it's possible.